Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. sitting with my best friend turn what's up buddy what's going on brother well we're not exactly sitting together but uh you know you've got big uh uh uh, 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 uh airport uh things and these airports are, are are crazy around the holidays oh my goodness yeah we got a email yesterday my son's headed to germany today i uh, was supposed to fly iceland air and iceland air canceled 75 percent of their flights so we get an email saying that they put them on a united flight on a, in a different airport what? And like two or three hours earlier than he was originally flying. So it's been created this kind of chaos. chaos. I would say, yeah. So, so hold and, on. And hold I got to go, I got to go shopping still because I'm cooking for my wife's party tomorrow. Oh. So, for, so for 60, 75 people or something like that. So I got oh, a crazy. crazy day. Yeah, no doubt. So, so uh, his flight, his flight from Germany hasn't been canceled. No, Iceland. Uh, for, uh, I know they're they have some serious weather going on right now. They're they're having um, air control uh, air uh, controller uh, strikes, so oh. they just totally put him on uh, United. So what is uh, that? He could actually get stuck in Iceland. I mean, if the air controllers are going on, he could, he could just get stuck in. Well, it's not a bad place to get stuck, I would guess. But you know, it, that's pretty crazy, though. Yeah, it's funny because I, I was when I was when I looked it up. There's a lot of people stuck in Iceland right now. I'm like, well, luckily he didn't get stuck. He got, you know, well, maybe uh, he's not through there yet. Well, no, he's not going through Iceland. He's going. He got oh. he, he from uh, changing uh, in Iceland to a nonstop from Dulles to Frankfurt. Oh, well, he kind of won in that bad thing then. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. he's probably hoping that he gets the, the same thing coming back, but. Yeah, probably not. That well, maybe you know the air traffic controllers are on strike. You know they're on strike. You know, yep. Dude, that's so. wild, man. Yeah, yeah. He kind of lucked out. He won in that that situation. <laughs> he right? did. I didn't. No, <laughs> My day just got crazy. So <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, well, whatever. That's crazy. Um, I'm pretty excited about today. We uh we have one of our friends coming on, and um she's actually been on the podcast a couple times. But we uh, we today she's uh, releasing her book, so I kind of want to get into that and, and uh, help talk about it. Oh yeah, she, I mean she's an amazing, amazing human being, amazing person. Someone talking about resilience when you when you when you mm. talk about her and you talk about her journey, you you have to think of resilience because that's, I mean she's she's an amazing person. We're going to get into a little bit more of this and then and, and about the book and stuff, but. Yeah, I, I'm excited to talk talk to her about her journey uh, to develop this book and uh, and you know uh, just yeah. about the book in general. Same. I mean, like he, he, the last two times that we've talked to her, we we've cried. So um, I, I can't imagine yeah. we're gonna talk about the book and not cry again. So uh, so we should probably get into it. Um, so today uh, on the podcast is Lala, and I'm not even gonna try your last name, Lala, but is Lala uh, best known as Lala's updos? Um, she's an incredible artist. Um, she if you've if you've listened to um our other podcasts, if not, I highly recommend that you go back and listen to those. They are absolutely awe inspiring to hear about her life and to everything that she's endured um or you can just you know read it in her book so miss lala welcome welcome back to your day off thank you for having me guys it's an honor to be back and uh, i'm really grateful for all your love and support throughout the years oh and course, back uh, to your audience and uh and share more news about my journey that's incredible how did they um how did you uh i mean like like Everybody has a story, right? But how did you decide that 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 you you wanted to write a book or you needed to write a book? Well, 
I did not get this idea overnight, to be honest with you. This this idea actually uh, came up eight years ago when I started my career in the bridal industry back in 2015 uh, when I had my first class. Uh, because I was a new educator, there were not a lot of educators, actually, independent educators on the market. When I started my career as an educator in the bridal industry, uh, the only people that were actually independent educators uh, teaching bridal hair back then in 2015 was Heather Chapman and Jenny, the confession of a hairstylist. Right. Uh, that was the time when Instagram started to take off and, and you know, get that uh, feel of hey, I can actually uh, do something with this platform. This could help me grow. It could give me the exposure that that I need. And that helps helped a lot of us to become independent educators because we got that exposure that we couldn't get through anything else. And I remember my first class because I was a new educator and I didn't really know much about educating and, and being in front of an audience. I tried to fill in the, the time in between my styling and my, my education with a little bit of, a, of my story, trying to let the audience learn a little bit about me, who I am, where I'm coming from and how I got to do what I'm doing. And by sharing a little bit of my story with them and about my background, I, uh, to my surprise, most of the people waiting for uh, to talk to me after the class uh, didn't mention much about what I taught in the class, but they mentioned more about my story and how it inspired them to do something when they go home. And then that continued. Um, and I could say pretty much that for the past eight years, I have taught every single weekend. I was either in a class or I was either in a show being in front of uh uh, tens, hundreds, and uh, sometimes thousands of people when I went to hair shows. I think my biggest audience were, was around 7,500 people. Wow. And, uh, I made a, a rule to talk a little bit about my story. Um, first of all, I'm an immigrant that came in this country uh, 18 years ago with a small suitcase, uh, you know, $300 in my pocket, the, the toddler in my arms and and big dreams. And a lot of people think that um, success is based on how many connections you have or how much money you have or, you know, how many people are are, are there to support you. And I I just wanted to tell everyone around me that it, it is actually possible to succeed even if you do not have the money, you don't have the language, you don't have the support, you are not a platform educator. You can literally build the life of your dreams if you're determined to do so and you're not taking no for an answer you know so that was the reason I, I shared my life so often with with everyone when I was on stage or a, a class because I wanted them to have that hope and to see that I'm the living proof that you can actually succeed without having anything if you're determined to, to do so and by sharing my story in each class and each hair show Weekend after weekend after weekend after weekend for years, all I heard at the end of my performances, show performances and classes, uh, very few talked about my styling and, and what I taught them. And I would say 90% of the people were talking about the stories that I shared with them and how uh, inspired them. And I would have people coming back to my class, see me again, coming to a hair show and come to see me again and then tell me, I went back to school. I went and opened my own salon. I went and opened my own suite. I got uh, out of that bad relationship. I went back to school and took my license. And and I, I heard this over and over again. And every person sharing their stories and telling me how my story inspired them, eventually uh, they would end up telling me after each show and each class, I really think you should write a book. I really think you should write a book. I think you should write a book. If you would write a book, I would buy it tomorrow. <laughs> and I kept hearing this message over and over and over again for the past eight years to the point where I wasn't sure if uh, I'm imagining that I'm hearing this because uh, writing has been my passion since I was a child. And I have been writing since I was a child, but not for the eyes of others. And at one point, I didn't know anymore if I'm truly hearing this message or it's just my passion for writing and I'm trying to fulfill something that I had deep inside me, right? So uh, in 2018, I decided to move to Florida from California. 
And that's when I started to pray about it. I'm like, usually everything that I do in my life, and especially things that are out of my comfort zone, I always pray and ask guidance, you know, and I'm like, God, I, I really need to know, is this something that you're trying to tell me? Is this a message coming from you as a message from above where it's just my passion for writing and I'm imagining that I'm hearing things. And uh, I started to pray about this and um, the first sign, I literally told God, I want a sign that would leave me with no doubt that I am hearing this message for a reason and it's your will for me to do it. And it's not just me imagining things. And uh, that was um, August of 2018 when I moved to Florida and uh, I kept praying about it. And in December, I got a phone call from a, a journalist in New York. Uh, I do not remember her name, but she told me she received my uh, info and my contact from Gordon. Um, Gordon Miller. Gordon Miller. Uh, Gordon Miller being the first person who interviewed me in the beginning of my career while he was with American Salon. So the lady is, uh, was looking into doing um, um, a documentary about uh, people in the hair industry that made a name for themselves without necessarily being platform educators, being supported by a brand. Like literally they made a name in the industry on their own. And she asked me to interview me for like an hour. And uh, she flew from New York to Fort Lauderdale. And we ended up spending actually six hours together instead of 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, and the reason for that is because she wanted to know uh, more about me other than uh, than my career story. She wanted to learn about my background in, or in order for her to understand what molded me into the woman I am today and what kind of like pushed me and motivated me to, to get to where I'm at today. And uh, to make the story short, the, the girl left my house, hugged me, and she said uh, when she left my house, uh, Lala, I make a living through writing. Uh, journalism is, is my passion and my love. And I need to tell you that you have a way with words and your story is so powerful. I really think you should write a book. And this is coming from someone who's doing a living through writing. Definitely. And that my first sign like when I heard that though I had that com conviction that this is the sign that I asked for and uh, of course I found everything to do except writing I didn't get to writing even though I got a sign that I asked for and uh, that was in December of 2018 and in 2019 I'm going to ISSC Long Beach for a hair show performance I finish my stage performance and then I get off and I'm running because I uh, I was supposed to have a hands-on class at, uh, at the show. And uh, I had like very, a very short period of time between my stage performance and my class. And I remember running to the restroom because my class was starting in 15 minutes. And when I got out, someone called my name and I'm turning around and I see uh, this lady and I thought she's there for my class. So I'm like, if you're looking for my class, I can walk you there. I'm on my way back. And she says, no, uh, Lala, my name is Rhonda. I uh, flew all the way from Portland uh, for the past six months. Um, every time I landed on your page, God put it on my heart to reach out and tell you that you need to write that book. And we're talking about a person that doesn't know anything about me. Wow. <laughs> this person ever in my life she she haven't seen me and she never reached out in those six months that God put it on her heart to reach out and tell me that because she felt it's crazy and I will think she's crazy and she said when I saw that you're going to be at ISSC Long Beach I said you know what I'm going to fly there I'm going to tell her that in person and if she's th she thinks I'm crazy that's fine I can fly back home and get my peace back and I'm sitting at, at ISSC Long Beach on the hallway and I'm staring at this woman because I kept praying for that. And this woman who doesn't know anything about me, she comes and tells me that. So uh, I made it home and I bought a notebook. Well, I, think, and I think you got your sign there, Lala. 
exactly and i got more than one and i and i and i was like okay okay i got it i'm going to go home and write i'm going to be obedient and i'm going to listen and i'm and i'm going to do what i what i'm meant to do and uh i bought a, a notebook i went home and i promised myself that i will uh use every little free time that i have to to write my memoir and uh i found time for everything else except writing that book and my excuse was always i don't have time i don't have the time i don't have the time when would i have the time cuz mm. during the week i was home teaching local classes being a mom being a wife running my uh my business and then on weekends i was always flying somewhere right so i honestly didn't really have a lot of time I, or i didn't make time for it uh and then 2020 came right we all stayed home and we didn't know what it's coming and uh it was a hard lesson for me because most of my income uh um and the what was paying my bills was uh teaching and i could not teach in 2020 anymore because i was home so i couldn't travel people couldn't come to me and that was a tough lesson for me i was home for a year not making a penny and that's when i decided that um what i have done it was beautiful yes i did made a career but that career means nothing and my name means nothing and thing and my image and my brand and my reputation means nothing if i cannot make money with that and 2020 was a hard lesson for me and i had all the time in the world to write but i haven't mm. because i was so depressed and so scared that I lost everything overnight and I don't know what it's coming that I went in through I would say a pretty bad depression. I woke up from that uh because uh I almost lost my daughter to suicide in 2020. Oh no. And that helped me uh wake up and and not think about what tomorrow hold but how to keep my my loved ones close and healthy. And uh, then in 2021, I said, you know what, I will make, I remember the end of 2020 when start, things started to like slowly get a little bit back to normal. Like here in Florida, we had it pretty well, you know, we were pretty open. We didn't really feel, feel it so hard like the, the rest of the country. So in 20, the end of 2020, I remember that I told myself, you know what, in 2021, I will come up with online education in case anything else happens, I have a source of income, you know. And second, I am going to make time to write that book. And that was my promise to myself uh, uh, between 2020 and 2021 and New Year's Eve. And uh, 2021 came and we were all trying to get back to normal, tried to figure out how we're going to make some money, how we are going to like, you know, bring our business to whatever times we're living because we had to adapt to different things. The, the you know, classes were not selling anymore like they used to. Most of the location had a lot of rules and regulations from a state to another. So all my focus and energy pretty much went into like, how am I bringing my business back and, and trying to educate again? And um, I remember the first uh, part of 2021, I would say almost for six months, all I did was trying to bring my business back and in the same time, build my online education uh, library. And I did manage to um, build my online education. I worked really, really hard on that. And by the time I was almost done with that and I said, okay, I finished with this. Now I will have time to focus on the book. Uh, my husband was diagnosed with uh, stage four kidney cancer in September. So oh, wow. by, by the time I was done with work and, and trying to make my financial part work, I got the news about my husband. We, we didn't know what it's going to be or any of that. Uh, he went through a major surgery in November. Um, he got his right kidney removed uh, with a huge tumor. And we've been told that he will have to start uh, doing chemo uh, after New Year. So there goes my, my free time and my focus that I promised myself that I will put into writing that book. 
And uh, I started to think more and more serious about how I could make a living without traveling because uh, most of my income came from traveling, you know, around the country and teaching uh, bridal classes and salons and um, and hair shows. And um, we do not have any family here in Florida, so I knew I will have to be home for him. Uh, we don't know exactly what to expect, but I knew I cannot travel and be away from home anymore. And that's when I started to think about uh, an old dream of mine of opening an academy and be able to still do that, but mostly from home and not um, travel anymore. So um, he started chemo in uh, January of 2022. And that's when I started to look for places to open academy. And I managed to do that uh, in February. I opened without any noise. I just posted about it and I just went straight into work because we needed all the money. Uh, my husband was not able to work anymore. Um, and all the financial responsibility was pretty much on my shoulders now. And to that financial responsibility, we actually added another bill by opening this academy. So, um, and to be honest with you, even if it was a, a an old dream of mine to open it, I, um, it didn't feel like a celebration, you know, it was more like a four step. Um, it was, yes, indeed. It was wonderful to know that I opened my own academy, but the, the circumstances didn't really allow me to, to feel like celebrating or any of that. And I went straight into work and I went straight, to, straight into work with, with a heavy heart and with a lot of fear, not knowing if I will, um, if I will be able to keep up with everything mm. and a lot of prayer mm -hmm. and uh, God blessed me with work from the first day. I remember that I worked six days a week. I was so busy. My calendar was so booked that from February to uh, September, I worked every day, Monday to Saturday. And in the same time, I continue to work on creating content for my online education so I can launch it. And then I had my daughter going to college. Then, then I was uh, next to my husband. And <sighs> let's just say I had no time to rest anymore or think about anything else, less of writing a book or <laughs> focusing mm -hmm. on anything else, you know. And um, I remember... Uh, Last year, uh, New Year's Eve, I told my husband uh, right before Christmas, I said, you know what? I don't want to go to any parties. I don't want to see anyone. I want to go to a cabin in the mountains, secluded. I want to disconnect. And I just want to have some re rest and peace. Uh, going through that year of chemo with my husband, uh, being uh, financially responsible for everything and working. like Because on Sundays, I was actually... It was not a Sunday. It was not a rest day. In those days, I was editing videos and trying to build my online platform and uh, respond emails and you name it. Everything else that I didn't get a chance to do during the week, I had to do it on Sundays. So, yeah, at the end of the year, I was burned out and I didn't want to do anything else. And uh, we did went to, to the mountains and in our culture... We have uh, this uh, this thing in New Year's Eve. We put uh, a wish for the new year. And I remember at 12 o'clock, my husband asked me, uh, did you put a wish? You don't forget to put a wish. And uh, I realized I did. I was so tired and so exhausted that I didn't even think about putting a wish. And I she said, oh, wishing my God. for sleep and rest. <laughs> And uh, I remember kissing us, kissing at, at 12 o'clock. And I said in my mind, God, I do not want anything in 2023. I am not asking for anything. All I want is some rest and peace. And that's all I wished for. And we came home in January of this year. And a week later, uh, I started to feel sick. Uh, and then my toes started to act up like uh, I would have no blood circulation. And uh, shortly after that, my hands followed. And I got to the point, it 
uh, like last week of January, I was not able to use my hands anymore at all. I was not even able to hold a fork or a cup of coffee in my hands. Uh, my my hands were com uh, like completely swollen, very uh, tender to touch. Uh, they had like a reddish purplish uh, color and my hand, my my uh, fingers would literally sit straight, completely straight and stiff, and I would not be able to bend them and hold anything in my hands. I went through intens intensive testing in, uh, in February, like almost four weeks of testing. I've done every test possible. And beginning of March, I was uh, diagnosed with Raynaud's syndrome uh, and arthritis. Uh, both are uh, autoimmune uh, conditions. Uh, they don't know what causes it, so there is no really no treatment for it. And they uh, told me that it's mainly triggered by um, huge amounts of, uh, of stress. Uh, it got worse and worse. I started to use my toenails because of those prolonged periods of no blood circulation into my extremities. I started to use, lose my nails and my and my toenails. Hmm. I started to cancel classes after classes after classes because I could not use my hands anymore. And uh, the funny, the funny thing, the scary thing is that I told you guys that a year back I was busy Monday to Saturday, right? To the point where in September I had to take Saturdays off so I can get a little bit of rest. And January is coming. I'm getting sick. And then all the bookings stopped from getting to one to two bookings a day, every day for a year. I had bookings all the way to April that were made the year before, but starting January, my books were not getting any bookings anymore. My calendar, like no bookings, nobody was booking any classes anymore. And we're getting into February and we're, I'm getting sicker and still no bookings. And we're getting into March and I'm getting sicker and no bookings. And I'm like, it's, and I'm like literally checking my, my, uh, my website and my links every day to see what's going on. Is this something, my links are broken. My website is not working. My, <laughs> what's going on? Why am I not getting any bookings anymore? It doesn't make sense. So, does it? In addition of not having any bookings, which means no money are coming into my calendar, right? I'm starting to cancel classes because of my inability to use my hands. So I'm not using money just by not making any money anymore because I have no bookings. I'm actually starting to lose money because I am refunding classes that were paid the year before. And then on top of that, all of my students are flying from other states or other countries and they are they they demand me to pay them for their travel fees and expenses so i'm not refunding money just for the classes i'm starting to give money back to people for their travel expenses wow. and i'm losing money for three months in a row and then i have uh march comes and i cannot work I'm not getting any bookings and there is no treatment for me. And I've been put on um, depression medication so they can control the stress. So I don't get triggered uh, through this episodes and the depression medication and the pain medication and the dry mouth medication and the, I don't even know. I, I got so much medication in, 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 in March that I became a zombie and I was not able to, to function properly anymore. And, uh, I, my mental health went down. I, uh, I'm seeing my life pretty much going through my eyes and I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not able to, to have any control over anything. And uh, I saw pretty much my career and and my dream that I built really hard hard in the last eight years like vanishing overnight and I have no control over it so uh that put a toll on my mental health and I went through uh a really bad um depression and breakdown in March which brought me uh so down that I decided to uh just cancel all my classes, do refunds for everything, close my my bookings, and uh, and take off for a month, so I can uh, I can 
get back on my feet. And uh, that's what I did. I I canceled all the classes in, in April, cleared all my calendar. And beginning of April, I took off and flew to Utah in a small town, a secluded town in the mountains to one of my good friends, Christina Cridal. Maybe you guys are familiar with her yeah, name. Yeah, we know Christina. Uh, she used to be part of the Cosmo Prof artistic team sure. with me. And uh, I left the house with the decision that I'm going to go there and write that book that I never had time for. <laughs> and right before I flew to Utah, I remember I called my mom and I had a pity party telling her how God sucks and how he helped me build all this and how he took everything away from me. And I, I don't understand why this is happening to me. <laughs> Uh, and my mom is telling me this. Um, what was the thing that you asked for on New Year's Eve? A resolution. And I said, peace oh, yeah. and rest. Yeah, peace I asked for peace and rest. And she said, if this thing with your health would have uh, happened to you, do you think you would have stopped? You would have taken a break to take care of yourself? And I said, uh, most likely no. Most likely no. No, I have. I, I don't think so. And then my mom said this to me. What is one thing that brings you peace? And I thought she's talking about my my prayer life. And I said, I, I, I do not get my, my peace through prayer. I'm like, God is not on my side. I, I do not find my peace. And my mom was like, I'm not asking you about your prayer life. I'm asking you, what do you do when you're stressed? Like some people like to run. Some go to the gym, some listen to music. For me, it's long walks. What is your thing? And without even thinking, uh, uh, Corey, I said to my mom, it's writing. You know it's writing. I've been writing since I was a kid. You know, every time I'm stressed, everything goes wrong. I go and I write. And then my mom, it's like, like my, my mom is literally like putting the puzzle together for me to to like, here it is. You see it? What else do you need? <laughs> And then my mom says, and what was the reason you didn't write that book all this time? And I said, because I didn't have the time. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am, my books are not filling up. Nobody's booking me anymore. I can't work because my hands are not allowing me to. My husband was declared cancer free in January. My daughter is gone to college. So here I am not having anyone that is depending on me for me to help and not have the time for it I don't have any bookings anymore so I have all the the, the time in the world the only problem is that I can't write because my hands are not helping me right but I am going to Utah with the decision to write that book no matter what I'm going to dictate it and uh, I did write it I did came back and I wanted to jump straight back into what I did before. But when I wrote the book in, in Utah, I didn't write it as a book. I just wrote everything that I remember. So it was just a long story written by hand, right? So the book still needed a lot of work, like put it into chapters, making it like flow from a story to another. And, you know, like really like put it into a book and I came home and I said, you know what? I took a break uh, from teaching for so long. My husband just started working. Uh, we still need money. Uh, let me go jump back to where I was before, right? And I'm trying to book classes and my hands are getting worse again. Mm. As I'm trying to get back to teaching, my hands are starting to act again because they were better while I was in Utah. And it's not meant for me to go back. So in June, I had to, the, to take the decision to close down my academy because I could not teach anymore. Mm. And when I closed down my academy in June, that's when I actually took the time to write, to finish the book. I said, okay, I can't do anything that I did before. I'm not allowed to. Then I'm just going to keep this promise and finish this book. <laughs> So that's what I did all summer. I literally put all the book together and turned it into what it is today. And um, while I was in, I was in Utah, uh, my good friend Christina said this to me, Lala, with all due respect, I do not think that teaching is your calling. Mm. 
And I looked at her and I could not believe she's telling me this. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, I built a career around this and I'm a really good educator. I had stand up room only all, all my career. I'm like, if this is not my calling, you really think that I would be so successful. And she says this to me, I sat in your class when you were with Cosmo Prof artistic team several times. And do you know what I've learned from your classes? And I said, what? And she said, or what I remember from your classes. And I said, what? And she said, nothing. I'm like, are you trying to tell me that I'm a bad educator? And she said, no, I think you're a terrific educator. And the fact that you are so successful, it's proof for that. But you know what I remember for your classes, Lala? I remember the stories. I remember you flipping the 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 hair one once and then turning back and finish and, and continuing your story and then flipping the hair one more time. And I always felt that in your classes, you are not filling in the space and the time with your stories. You are filling in the time with your education. The main thing was actually your stories. And that's why people felt so inspired by you. And that's why people at the end of the class never said anything about what you taught them, but about your stories and how it inspired them. Because that's what made the most uh, um, influence and, and, and touch their hearts. It was mostly your story and how they related to you than what you taught them. And she said, I think you can go home, Lala, and teach anything you want. You brought up a brand uh, that it's recognized internationally. You managed to get on the big stages and represent your own brand and your own name, which is very rare. Uh, you managed to do all this in a matter of only eight years, uh, a thing that takes us uh, almost a lifetime to build what you built. Uh, you work with brands, you won awards, you got published. She was like, do you know how many thousands, hundreds of people out there would love to know how to get there, but they don't know how to? And she was like, you can teach any of this, but I don't really think this is your calling, Lala. I think your calling is to make a difference in people's lives through your stories, because you are a storyteller. And that encouraged me a lot. I remember I, we had that discussion right before I left Utah and I came home with a different uh, mindset up because in our culture, the Romanian culture and the East European culture, we've been taught and programmed that money can be made only through hard work, like working with your hands. And it never, I would be honest with you, I was so caught up into making this money working hard and through my hands and through my skills all these years that it never crossed my mind that I could actually monetize my knowledge, not necessarily my skills, you know? And then I realized that I can teach someone all the skills in the world when it comes to bridal styling, but if they do not know how to run a business, they would actually never make money out of that. They could be the guy tinga bridal here and they will never make money because they don't know how to make that money. They don't know how to monetize those skills. And uh, when I came to Utah, I had a, a totally different setup in mind, and and I and I and I managed to get back to myself and realize that nothing is impossible, that I have so much more to offer, that uh, I left that pity party to go on for too long, <laughs> and uh, I came home with the decision to uh, to monetize uh, my knowledge and not my skills anymore, you know, and uh, just trust the process and trust that God is going to bring me to the next level. Because from my life experience, every time that God tried, tried to bless me more, I was so resistant to that change that God actually had to kick my, my butt to get me out of that place and felt like a negative change, but eventually turned out to be a blessing for me. And I feel that's that's where I'm standing right now. You know, I'm I'm working on all these modules, um, business modules about photography, videography. Hey, online. Lola, before we before we get there, so when Christine gave you these this um this advice, let's call it, and then you went mm -hmm. home to edit the book, did it? Do you, do you think it changed the edit of the book? Just having like like a uh, uh, more purpose with it, or, or or direction in which to edit it? Um. I think it changed my view on on the future. And yes, I think the the end of the book was a, 
way more positive than it would have been if I did not have that late discussion over tea with, with Christina. Yes, she did have a big influence on, on my mind uh, set up and, and the way I saw things when I left uh, Utah, definitely. Yeah, I you call it a magic place. And uh, next time you get a prompt from God or you 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 ask God for something, follow through because obviously he created a pandemic just so he can grab your attention. The rest of us had to go through <laughs> it just so he can get to you. Uh, uh, I mean, it, what an incredible story! And, and this is only just the the tip of the of the conversation. I mean, obviously the book goes so much deeper. Uh, and, and, and I'm just, I'm so thankful that we had an opportunity to just, you know, connect with you and really got to, to get you on the podcast and, and talk about your story. But even the podcast is probably just the tip of what's in that book. So, uh, I'm, yeah, a lot of people that bought the book uh, reach out before they started reading it or they order it and they direct message me and they said, oh, I'm so excited to read it and, and learn about your career. And a lot of people think that this book is about my career and my life in America, but it's actually a memoir. So it literally starts with my my uh, birth story and how was, uh, I was actually not supposed to be uh, born. Uh, life under communism. I was uh, born in East Europe in a communist country. Um, it talks about my dreams of making it to to America one day. Uh, the title of it uh, of the book actually has a lot to do with that, but I'm not going to spill the tea. I'm gonna let the the readers learn about that. So it's literally my whole life. Uh, people are not going to learn just about my career in the United States and how I made it where I'm at today, but uh, they're gonna learn about my background, about what molded me into the woman that I am today, what gave me that drive to to get where I'm at today. They they're going to learn about life under communism. Uh, they're going to learn uh, the funny parts about me, uh, the sad parts uh, of my story. They, they're they going to learn it all. Of course, I, I could not uh, fit all my life into a book. Probably I will need uh, another four or five or more. <laughs> <laughs> but I tried my best to put together uh, like things that I remember that show... Um, a part of my life that people don't know about and will help them to understand more uh, the story behind my success. That's amazing. What, um, what, uh, where can the book be found? Uh, the book can be found on Amazon uh, or on my website uh, at lalasabdus.com. Uh, it's called The End Alliance by Laura Chihaya. Laura Chihaya. Don't look for yes. Laura. She doesn't not, this book. Not for Laura Chihaya. That's awesome. And that you said that's available on Amazon. So if anyone wanted to pick it up for Christmas yeah. or, or whatever, it's uh or 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 whenever, yeah, it's available there. It's available. I can send you guys the link if you have anywhere to put it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, we'll, we'll, we'll put a link in uh, with it as well. What um, what was your discipline? So you finally get home, and like when you when you actually like like the actual work of like putting the book together. Did you did you set off? Did you set up time like uh, you know, during the day and say, hey, I'm gonna work on editing it for an hour per day. Uh, no, I did not do that. I just told myself that I am not going to stop working on it until I finish. So that meant, um, I remember I started working, uh, beginning of July and, uh, I literally had to like rewrite the book pretty much. And it took me about, um, two months to rewrite it and put it into small stories that intertwine and have like a, a flow, you know? And uh, it took me like almost eight weeks to do that because it was pretty much like rewriting and I always added more things that, or took some things out and reconstructed it to look like a book. And then it took me another, because remember it was handwritten. Uh, and then it took me about another month to type it to type it and put it into chapters and all that did you um, um did you have to uh did, did you like how'd you learn how to write a book i guess is my question i did not learn how to write a book i, I you just put words on paper and like, her whole I'm life not, she's a writer <laughs> i'm 
writer. I do not consider myself a writer. You know, I just, I just wrote, I just wrote stories and uh, then I put them together into chapters, like small story chapters. And then I send it to an editor and uh, her first, the editor is actually a um, um, university professor that does, um, she teaches writing. And she has like a degree in writing and, and stuff like this. And I remember the first time she reached out, she said, uh, Lala, I wanted to have no doubts and no worries. I, I just wanted to tell you that you are actually a very good writer. Hmm. And this coming from someone who's doing writing uh, for a living, it was like a, a great encouragement. And uh, again, I did not take any courses. I just put it down there and I just told my stories like I usually do it when I'm in front of an audience that's it and usually when I write I'm I'm a little bit more articulate and I can I can go more into details than when I'm I'm actually talking about it so I guess it just uh God put it on my heart and he helped me put it on paper as well <laughs> did you did you write it in English I did write it in English of course <laughs> uh I wouldn't be able to write it in in Romanian because uh English, I mean, English is still my second language, but doing the kind of work that I'm doing, and especially, you know, when uh, teaching every day, a.m. to p.m. for years, uh, using just English, uh, you get to use uh, your your first language very little uh, in the house for a matter of a few minutes or half an hour or an hour at night, right. you know, when you family, and then your kids are talking English, and you're, you're not talking english anymore or romanian you're talking a mixture of english and romanian and you get to the point where you realize when you're trying to write something in romanian that it feels like second second uh, language now not the first one so i don't think i would actually be able to write it in romanian if i tried to <laughs> well it's good to know and save you some time to not have to translate it back that's awesome Lala, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for uh, giving us a little taste of your book and, and of your story. Um, I, I can't wait to uh, to dive into it. Um, I'm definitely going to be waiting on the audio book, though. So, uh, you know, if you if you need someone, if you need to hire someone to read it, you know, I think Tony's up for the job um, to, uh, to to read your book there. But uh, but Lala, once again, just thank you. Thank you for the friendship. And, and, and thanks for uh, thanks. Actually, thanks for writing the book. Uh, I, I think it'll be very inspirational to uh, to many. Thank you so much for having me back. And again, I appreciate you guys and your and your support and the love. And uh, hopefully, your audience uh, would be happy to learn more about my uh, my journey, and actually see exactly what I'm talking about by by reading the book because we touch like just the bigger picture. Just a bigger picture, exactly. Miss L Miss Lala from Lala's Updo's, uh, and now author and 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 queen of the industry. Uh, thank you very much for hanging out with us, and thank you very very much for joining us on your day off. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.